the mic and you all can just whatever the Holy Ghost leads you, okay? Praise the Lord, everyone. Isn't it good to be in the presence of the Lord? You may be seated. Amen. What a joyous presence of the Lord is in this place. I feel the joy of the Lord. Washington, D.C. is a very, very important place. Washington D.C. es un lugar bien importante. Probably one, the most important city in the world. Probablemente la ciudad más importante del mundo. There's a lot of important things that transpire here. Están muchas cosas importantes que pasan aquí. A lot of important buildings. Muchos edificios importantes. But this is the most important place in Washington D.C. Pero este es el lugar más importante en Washington D.C. This is the best place to be. Este es el lugar mejor estar. In the house of the Lord. En el lugar del Señor. In the presence of the Lord. Miracles take place. Lives are changed. Miracles begin to take root in lives. And we want to give honor to Pastor and Sister Staten. And the leadership here. For their faithfulness and sacrifice. God has done great things and I know that he is going to continue. And we are blessed to be here representing the country of Chile, South America. Estamos bendecidos estar aquí representando el país de Chile en el sur de América. Chile is a very unique country. Chile es un país bien único. It's a, a beautiful country. Es un país bello. And uh, to give you a little information about it, it is the longest, narrowest country in the world. Es el país más largo de todo el mundo. And as you look at it on the map, it's a little difficult to determine the size of it. But uh, as far as square miles, it is about the same size as the combined countries of Italy, Portugal, and Japan. Italia, Portugal, y Japón. But it only averages about 150 miles wide. Pero el promedio está so, solamente del de largo 150 millas. And uh, also to help you understand how long it is. Para ayudarte a entender cuánto largo está. If you could bring it up to the United States. Si lo pudiste traer a los Estados Unidos. Instead of it running north and south on the southwestern side of South America. En vez de ir desde el norte hasta el sur. Uh, you can put it across the U.S. One end would be at San Francisco, California, the Pacific Ocean. The, up, the other side would go out past New York City, out onto Long Island a little ways. It's about 2,700 miles long. And uh, I am thank, I'm thankful to tell you that God has blessed us. We have churches all through the country. Our northernmost church is in the city of Arica, up on the Peruvian border. And for us to get there from where we live, we go out on the edge of town, take the Pan American Highway north, Salimos en la carretera yendo por el norte. And 24 hours later, we arrive. 24 horas después. In Arica. Llegamos en Arica. But if we want to drive to our southernmost church in Chile. Pero si queremos manejar al la iglesia más sur en Chile. Although it's only about three or four hundred miles further. Aunque está solamente tres o cuatrocientos millas más lejos. It takes about fifty hours. Toma cincuenta horas. Because of the geography. Por razón de la geografía. Chile is very mountainous. Chile tiene muchas montañas. It has over 5,000 
uh, islands. Más que cinco mil is islas. And uh, down in the southern part, it looks a lot like they say a lot like Norway. Y en el sur se dice que aparece muy como Norway. And uh, if you could go, and I'd love for you to go with us to church in Punta Arenas. Si pudiste venir con nosotros en la iglesia en Punta Arenas. You feel the same Holy Ghost that you feel here. Sentirás el mismo Espíritu Santo que te sientes aquí. You feel right at home with your brothers and sisters. And not only would you be in the southernmost church, the United Pentecostal Church in Chile. No solamente estarías en el, la iglesia más sur de Chile. You'd be in the southernmost United Pentecostal Church in the whole world. Estarías en el, la iglesia más del sur en todo el mundo. Way down on the Straits of Magellan. Allí en, in the Straits of Magellan. We're during, uh, we're, uh, Straits of the Magallanes. Así es. <laughs> Where in June, July, and August it's cold. En junio, julio y agosto hace frío. Where there's icebergs and penguins. Donde hay hielo y pingüinos. With the fire of the Holy Ghost is burning. Con el fuego del Espíritu Santo quemando. We are very anxious to return back to Chile. Estamos muy ansiosos de regresarnos a Chile. Just so you'll understand a little bit, I'm an MK. Para que tú entiendas, soy un hijo de los un misionero. Missionary kid. Un hijo de un misionero. I grew up in Chile. Yo crecí en Chile. And uh, God called me to the ministry, began my ministry there. Dios me llamó al ministerio allí. Blessed me with a beautiful Chilean wife. Me ha bendecido con una esposa de Chile. I met her at our conference on April 6th of 1985. Oh, la conocí en la conferencia el 6 de abril en 1985. The following year, el año on siguiente, February 22nd, 1986, we were married. 22 de febrero, 1986, and she's been my faithful companion following me all around. God has been so good to us. We are so appreciative of that. With our two daughters, we have a daughter, our oldest is married, she's 30 years old, lives in California. Our youngest is finishing up her degree at the University of Michigan, she's 25. But the greatest joy we have is that they love and serve the Lord Jesus We were missionaries in the country for 14 years. And then uh, I jokingly say that the Lord called us back to the U.S. as missionaries. We went to the city of Miami on metro missions. Started a church there and pastored it for 10 years. And uh, you know God has a sense of humor. Because he called us from beautiful, warm, sunny Miami. In January. In enero. To Michigan. Michigan. <laughs> Talking about a shock to your system. But the same Lord was with us in Chile, Miami was with us in Michigan. Where we were also there for almost 10 years pastoring. But we are so thankful and happy that God has called us back to Chile. After being here for 20 years pastoring, God has called us back and we're excited about it. I'd like for my wife to come and to greet you. And uh, just to explain a little bit uh, what she has on her heart today. May the Lord Jesus bless each one of you. Me siento muy contenta y privilegiada de estar en este lugar. I feel very blessed and privileged to be in this place. Eh, con su pastor y su familia. With your pastor and his wife. También me doy cuenta de que hay muchos hispanos en este lugar. Also, I realize there are several Hispanics here. También el pastor me presentó a otra chilena, pero me siento contenta por aquí. Pastor also has introduced me to another Chilean. I feel very happy about that. <laughs> pero me siento más contenta donde yo puedo sentir. But I feel happier than ever that I can feel the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ.
aunque tenemos diferencia de cultura, de país, de comida y de otras cosas. Although we have a difference between our culture, our uh, countries, our food, etc. Pero gracias a Dios que tenemos algo en común. But thank the Lord we have something in common. Y ese es nuestro Señor Jesucristo. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. Although, uh, even though I can't understand all that you say, but thank the Lord we don't have to understand him, all we have to do is feel him in our lives. I want to thank you, the North American Church, for having sent a missionary to my country. The United Pentecostal Church did not exist in Chile. But thanks be unto the Lord and the North American Church, it now exists. When the Senior Well family arrived in Chile, there was one small church. But now we have over 70 churches. And that is thanks to the Lord and the North American church. At times you might wonder if it's worth the sacrifice to support missions. I want to tell you that I am the result of what you have done sending missionaries to my country. You changed the curse in my life into a blessing. Now in my family there are four generations of us in Pentecost. Because from right here you are impacting the world. My mother was born and raised in another denomination. She told me that when I, when I was about four years old, she started uh, attending a, another Christian church. She said it was a very difficult transition. Que, que ella se daba cuenta que había algo diferente. She realized that there was something different. Así que asistía de vez en cuando. So she would go to church once in a while. Asistía una vez o dos veces al mes. Once or twice a month. Y así yo me empecé a criar en esa iglesia. And she began to raise me there in the church. Y no tuve maestro de escuela dominical ni líder de jóvenes. Uh, but we didn't have in that small church uh, Sunday school teachers nor youth leaders. Así que yo asistía regularmente un poquito a la iglesia. And so I would go uh, a few times to the church. Pero yo dije, cuando, cuando yo tenía como 12 años, yo dije, yo me voy a ir a esta iglesia. And when I was about 12 years old, I said, I'm going to leave this church. Y así empecé a crecer. And I began to grow. Ya tuve mis 19 años. And I was about 19 years old. Pero en mi vida había un vacío. But there was an emptiness in my life. Y yo buscaba algo. Yo buscaba algo. And I sought, uh, sought after something. Yo era una ciudadana más que yo no tuve droga ni problemas de, aqu de, aquellas, de aquellas cosas. And I, in my, uh, I didn't, uh, wasn't into drugs or into any problems in the world. Pero sí sentía un vacío. But I felt an emptiness. Yo ya llegó el tiempo que ya vivía sola y ya me estaba independizando. And time came where I was living alone. I was be, uh, living independently. Y, y yo dije yo no voy más a la iglesia. And I said I'm not going to go to church anymore. Así que me fui a la casa de mi hermana. And so I went to my sister's house. And by mistake, I got off the bus about four blocks too soon. And as I was walking, uh, uh, there was a uh, family uh, couple in front of me. And I uh, started looking at them. And uh, they caught my attention. For two, for two reasons. Because it was a couple with their two children y por su de and the way that they were dressed. Yo dije, yo I said they must be Pentecostals. And for me it was uh, a, a rarity to see families together because I come from a family where my grandparents, my parents, my brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles are all divorced. Así que yo los a and so I began to follow them. Ellos they started walking faster. Yo Ellos caminaban lentos. They slow down. Yo caminaba lento. Slow down. Y así los empecé a seguir hasta que llegaron a un lugar como, como este tal vez. 
And uh, I followed them until we got in, into a place that was probably similar to this. Había como mil personas. There was about a thousand people there. Y era la iglesia pentecostal And it was the United Pentecostal Church. Y desde aquel entonces hasta ahora yo soy una mujer pentecostal de la cabeza a los pies. And from that time to this, I've become a Pentecostal woman from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Yo llegué en abril a la iglesia. I came, uh, arrived at the church in April. Ya y en mayo yo ya estaba en el instituto bíblico. And in May I was already in the Bible school. Y la palabra de Dios transformó mi vida para siempre. And the word of God has transformed my life forever. Así que yo estoy muy agradecida a Dios. So I am very grateful unto the Lord. Y realmente mi vida cambió y yo quiero ser un testigo fiel. And my life has changed and I want to be a faithful witness. La palabra del Señor dice de modo si alguno está en Cristo no es criatura es las cosas que the word of God says behold if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away all things are become new Así pasó con mi vida. and that's what happened in my life mi vida pasó a un para una vida my life has changed and, and, and I have inherited eternal life y yo ser un y ser, este and I want to be a witness and preach the gospel y donde la sociedad no quiere hacerse responsable de nada Where society does not want to take responsibility for anything. es que los padres no quieren tomar sus responsabilidades Parents don't want to take the responsibilities. los hijos tampoco quieren obedecer a los padres Children don't want to obey their parents. así que realmente nosotros como cristianos necesitamos ser un, un ejemplo para ellos But us as Christians need to be an example no, them. no solamente en nuestras familias sino en nuestras comunidades in our families and in our communities. en los trabajos In our, on our jobs, in our schools, and wherever the Lord places us, la naturaleza nos forma. nature forms us, El pecado nos deforma. sin deforms la escuela nos informa. us, school informs us, Pero solamente nuestro Señor Jesucristo nos puede transformar. but only our Lord Jesus Christ can transform us. I want to continue preaching the gospel and being a faithful Alleluia. witness. May the Lord bless yes. you. What a difference the Lord makes in our lives. Amen. Amen. We ask that you pray for us. We are uh, deputizing now from church to church throughout the United Pentecostal Church of North America. Estamos deputizing de iglesia a iglesia en la iglesia de Norte Americana. And uh, number one, we need your prayers. Número uno, necesitamos sus oraciones. Uh, I believe that the scripture is true when it says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Creo que la, la escritura está correcto cuando se dice cuando la oración eficaz del del hombre justo sale mucho. Amén. Amén. Do you believe it? Lo crees? I believe we serve a God who answers prayer. I know He answers prayer. That's why I'm here. You're here as an answer to prayer. And as we return to Chile, we will be living in the capital city. As I mentioned, Chile is a beautiful country. Como he mencionado, Chile es un país bella. It's a mountainous country. Hay muchas montañas. And in the capital city, we're surrounded by mountains. Y en la capital estamos, tenemos muchas montañas alrededor de nosotros. And uh, about uh, 7 million people call Santiago home. Casi 7 mil personas llaman Santiago su hogar. And uh, we are so thankful and blessed to be able to uh, serve the Lord. Estamos tan agradecidos de estar capaz de servir al Señor. And we are anxious to return back to Chile. Y estamos ansios, ansiosos para regresarnos a Chile. Chile is the most modern and progressive country in Latin America. Chile es el país más moderno y desarrollado en el sur de América. And, and because of it, we have had a lot of changes over the past couple of decades. And uh, some of the most notable changes uh, have been the mass immigration uh, of people from other countries moving into Chile. 
algunos de los cambios incluso los inmigrantes yendo yendo a Chile. And uh, many people have migrated in from other countries in South America, such as Argentina, Bolivia. Muchas personas están llegando de otros países como Argentina, Bolivia. Colombia, Colombia, many people from Venezuela. Colombia, muchos de Venezuela. And uh, we speak Castilian Spanish in Chile. Hablamos castellano en Chile. And uh, when they come from other countries, they adapt to our customs, culture, and language. Cuando llegan de otros países, se acostumbran a nuestra cultura. And after a few months, feel right at home. Y después de pocos meses, se sientan en su hogar. But in the last eight or ten years, there have been a group of people migrating into Chile by the tens of thousands. Pero en los últimos 8 o 10 años han estado un grupo llegando por los miles. And they don't speak Spanish. Y no hablan español. They speak Creole. Hablan Creole. They're from the island of Haiti. Son de la isla de Haiti. Thousands and thousands of Haitians have migrated to Chile also. It's a long ways from Haiti to Chile. But I'm thankful to tell you today that God is doing great things. Two of our churches in the capital city not only have uh, services in Spanish every week, but they preach the Acts 2.38 one God message in Creole also. We're having revival among children, but we ask that you pray because there is so much more work yet to be done. Areas that we have not reached. Areas where there are where there is no apostolic church. But we're believing God for miracles. Amen. We serve a miracle working God. There is no closed door for him. Amen. He tells us that he has placed before us an open door. Which no man shall close. We just want to go through it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And today, uh, I would like to invite you to become a part of the Chilean revival team. Hoy día te quiero invitar a ser parte del Amen. It's an open invitation for everyone. Chile es una a todos. How do you do that? ¿Cómo lo puedes hacer? Pray for us. Ora para nosotros. Amen. And also we need financial support through partners in missions uh, to go back and continue the work. Amen. También necesitamos apoyo financial con parejas financiales. I believe, I believe that every time you pray, every time that you give, you're investing in eternity. And investing in the work in Chile. And when we get to heaven, I believe we're going to of what God has done. Amen. We could talk all day long about Chile. I'm very passionate about it. I uh, tell folks that I am a Chileanized gringo. Yo digo a personas que soy un gringo de Chile. I grew up there, and uh, that is home for me. Crecí allí y está mi hogar. But uh, instead of talking all morning long about Chile, let's talk about Jesus. Amen. Amen. I invite you to open your Bibles with me to the book of Ezra. Te invito a ir en tu Biblia al libro de Ezra. Chapter 2. Capítulo 2. The book of Ezra, chapter 2. Sorry, Robert. That's okay. No worries. And uh, Ezra, read the first verse. El primer verso. And uh, I do need to give, to give you... Uh, a disclaimer before I start. Now don't get nervous. You know, when people talk about disclaimers, you always get the feeling something bad might happen. Uh, but since I'm an MK and grew up on the mission field, came back in Miami, we pastored uh, 
church there had 16 nationalities were they were all Hispanics. En Miami tuvimos 16 nacionalidades, todos hispanos. I have been known to supposedly be preaching along in English. A veces me dicen que yo predico junto en inglés. But I have uh, sometimes gotten a little excited or talking faster than I think. A veces me emocionó hablando bastante rápido. And I have been known to say a word or two or three or more in Spanish. A veces yo predico en español. Thank God I have an interpreter today. Gracias a Dios tengo un interpreter hoy. And if I get switched around, we'll just switch you to English and I'll speak Spanish. Yo hablo en español, ella en inglés. And if I get turned around, just pray for me and say God blessing me doesn't si eso know any pasa, ora por mí y diga que él no sabe mejor. But I'm thankful that the Lord knows all about me. Hallelujah. If others knew us like God knows us, we wouldn't have a friend in the world. But all the love of Jesus Christ. But uh, if you would, would let me, I would like to start off like we would in Chile. Is that all right? When you find the scripture, say amen. amen. All right, that makes me feel at home. Ezra chapter 2 verse 1 says, Now these are the children of the province that went up out of captivity of those which had been carried away whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried away unto Babylon and came again unto Jerusalem and Judah every one unto his city. Ezra 2 verso 1 Estos son los hijos de la provin provincia que subieron al cautiverio de aquellos que Nebuchadnezzar rey de Babilonia había llevado cautivos a Babilonia y que volvieron a Jerusalén y a Judá cada uno a su ciudad. With the help of the Lord today, I want to talk to you on the thought identity theft. Voy a hablarles acerca del pensamiento uh, roba, robando su identidad. You may be seated. Pueda sentarse. Identity theft is a common word for us. El robo de identidad es una una palabra muy común para nosotros. We live in a society where it has become all too common. Vivimos en una sociedad donde está bastante común. Your identity is important. Tu identidad está importante. Not only your Financial identity that many people seek to steal. No solamente tu identidad financial que muchas personas buscan de robar. But the dictionary says that identity is the condition of being a certain person or thing. Pero el diccionario se diccionario se dice que la identidad es la condición de ser una persona o cosa. It is a set of characteristics by which a person or thing is definitely recognizable. Una colección de características por lo cual alguien se puede ser identificado. We live in a world that suffers from a loss of identity. Vivimos en un mundo que sufre de una pérdida de identidad. Identity crisis is something that we hear about also. El crisis de identidad es algo que escuchamos también. We hear about false identity. Escuchamos de identidad falsa. As we've already mentioned, identity theft. Como ya hemos mencionado, el robo de identidad. I had the opportunity with my wife and our youngest daughter to go to NAYC, the North American Youth Congress, this past summer. I never had gone before. Both my daughters said, Dad, you need to go. I'm glad I did. Wonderful atmosphere of worship. Great singing and praise. Wonderful ministry of the preaching of the word of God. 
Over 30,000 people gathered together to worship and glorify the Lord here It was a great experience. I'm glad I went. But while I was at NAYC, I had an experience that wasn't very good. It wasn't in church. But as we were getting ready to go to church one morning, my wife needed to stop by the store. And uh, while she was in the store, my phone, my phone uh, vibrated. And I glanced down, I was walking, and uh, I didn't really recognize it. The text didn't make a whole lot of sense. And so when I got to the car, I opened up the text and began to read it. It was a text from the bank. I, don't, I like to get texts from my friends, I like to get phone calls from my friends. But I don't like to get texts or phone calls from the bank. Something about it, they never call to tell you you have more in your account than you realize. And this text really confused me. And uh, they said, uh, you need to call the bank. And so I called. And I asked, what's all this about? And they said, are you in New York City and have you made a purchase for $468? And I said, no, I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. They said, well, your card has just been charged $468 in New York State. And we began to look a little bit more. And we found out that someone had bought $183 worth of pizza. Now, I like pizza. A mí me gusta pizza. And I am sure that I have consumed $183 of pizza in my lifetime. <laughs> But I have never bought $183 worth of pizza at one time. If we buy cheap pizza, it'd probably be enough for everybody to have a bite here today. And so we begin to talk back and forth with the bank. And uh, they finally begin to explain to me, I said, what's happening? They said, somebody has hacked into your account and stolen your identity. Thank the Lord that they caught it. It took about three months to get everything straight around. But that is all too common in our world today. Other people have lost everything they have by people stealing their identity. And then they steal that which is of value to them. We live in a world where technology has facilitated not only good things but bad things. They tell me now that there is a way that they can electronically just walk by you and read the information off your cards. Cerca de ti y robar tu, tu información electrónicamente. And so we have to be very vigilant about Entonces tenemos que tener cuidado. After that happened to me, Después de este paso a mí, I go on my phone and check my app every little me fui bit. En el teléfono para chequear. It's not that I have that much money. Cada vez no es que yo tengo bastante dinero. I just don't want it somebody Solo to take no away from a quien robándolo de mí. We read here in the book of Ezra aquí en el libro de Ezra, about a uh, situation that transpired in the life of the people of God. In this chapter we read where approximately 50,000 people en este leemos cuando aproximadamente returned from captivity 
Muchas personas regresaron de cautividad. Back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple and to rebuild the city. A Jerusalén para reconstruir el templo. And after many long years of captivity. Y después de muchos años de cautividad. They returned with rejoicing and joy. Regresaron con alegría. Thankful for what God was doing. Agradecidos por lo que Dios estaba haciendo. As they went back, they went back with great expectations. Regresaron con expectativas grandes. And uh, if if we were And continue to read in Ezra chapter 2. Si we're not going to take time to do it today. No vamos a tomar para hoy día. Because the names are a little bit difficult to pronounce. Los son un de I'll let you do that. Yo that te voy a en tu hogar. But from verses 2 to verse 58. Pero de, de, desde verso 2 hasta 58. It begins to name the folks that went back by families. De las familias que regresaron. It begins to tell who went back from Babylon to Jerusalem. It identifies them as part of the people of God. And as they went back, they had a challenge before them. But they were anticipating the blessing of God. But dropping down to the 59th verse, We read, and these are they which went up from Telmela, Telharsa, Cherub, and Adan, and Immer. But they could not show their father's house and their seed whether they were of Israel. Estos fueron los que subieron de Telmela, Telharsa, Cherub, Adan, y Immer, que no pudieron demostrar la casa de sus padres ni su linaje ni eran de Israel. Something transpired here. Algo pasó aquí. Along with the 50,000 that were able to go back to Jerusalem and uh, they were able to identify themselves with their families. Junto con los 50,000 que pudieron regresar y identificar con sus, con sus familias. There was another group of people, a small group, in that larger group. Hubo otro grupo más pequeño entre el grupo más grande. And I don't know where or how it happened. Yo no sé dónde o cómo pasó. But somewhere during the time of captivity. Pero algún lugar durante el tiempo de cautividad. They had lost their identity. Perdieron su identidad. And when they arrived or when they were going back to Jerusalem. Cuando llegando a Jerusalén. They were also excited like también everyone else. Tuvieron mucha emoción como los demás. But when they got back to the Jerusalem. Pero cuando llegaron a Jerusalén. They were not able to prove that they were of Israel. No estuvieron capaz de probar que fueron de Israel. The scriptures doesn't, don't tell us that they were not of Israel. La escritura no no dice que no fueron de Israel. It doesn't say they were wicked people. No dice que fueron malos. But it does tell us that somewhere along the way they lost their identity. Pero nos dice que en algún lugar en el camino perdieron su identidad. And it became a critical situation in their lives. Y convirtió en una situación bien fuerte en Because su vida. Our identity is the most important Porque thing we have. It's not just enough to be around where good things are happening. It's just not enough to be around where everybody's happy. But each and every one of us need to have an identity. And just as we live in a world that there, where there are people that would steal our identity to take Igual como vivimos en un mundo donde las personas quieren robar nuestra identidad por razón del dinero. There is an adversary who wants to steal our identity. Hay un adversario que quiere robar nuestra identidad. He wants to steal the most precious and important thing that we have in our lives. Quiere robar la cosa más preciosa que está en nuestras vidas. If you lose your identity. Si te pierdes tu identidad. You've lost everything you have. Has perdido todo lo que tú tienes. Not only do we have a natural identity, no solamente tenemos una identidad natural, but we have a spiritual identity. Pero tenemos una identidad espiritual. I enjoy being with people from other nations. Disfruto estar con personas de otras naciones. When we were in Miami, sometimes we would have a service, and after service, uh, we would have people bring typical dishes 
from their countries. En Miami, después de los servicios, personas traían unas comidas de sus países. I like to eat. A mí me gusta yeah. comer. And I like to eat and try food from other countries. Y me gusta probar comida de otros países. I like to be around different cultures. Y me gusta estar alrededor de otras culturas. Because it is interesting and I learn. Porque me interesa y yo aprendo. But our, even though, and we thank God for our identity that we have Uh, our natural identity. Gracias a Dios por nuestra identidad natural. Thank God for the country where each of us were born. Gracias a Dios por el país donde nacimos. Thank the Lord for this country where we live. Gracias a Dios por este país donde vivimos. Thank the Lord for the name that our parents gave to Gracias us. Gracias a Dios para el nombre que nos padres nos dieron. Thank God for our, those who have gone before us, our ancestors. Gracias a Dios para nuestros ancianos. But there is an identity that is more important than what we have on our birth certificate. Pues una identidad más importante de lo que todo está en nuestra certificación de there, nacimiento. There is a, an identity that is more important than we have on our driver's license or passport. Está una identidad que está más importante de lo que está en nuestra tarjeta de licencia. That is the identity that relates us to our Heavenly Father. And there is a thief who would try to steal away our relationship and our identity with God. It doesn't tell us where these Jews or, uh, from the Jews in Jerusalem lost their identity. Maybe it happened and they weren't even aware of it. Pasó cuando, sin saber. But it lets us know the importance of being diligent in our, with our identity. In the New Testament, we also read in the book of Luke. En el Nuevo Testamento, leemos en el libro de Lucas. Where there was a young man who came to his dad. Donde era un joven que llegó a su padre. He said, Dad, I'm tired of living at home. Diciendo, padre, estoy cansado de vivirme en, en el hogar. I'm going to go out and live the way I want to. Me voy a salir y vivir como yo quiero. Give me my portion of the inheritance. Dame mi herencia. His father, I'm sure, tried to reason with him. Su padre seguramente trató de hablar con él. Tried to convince him, son, just wait a little bit. Tratando de convencerle, espérate un momento. But the son was so insistent. Pero su hijo continuó. And finally the father gave in. Por fin el padre le dio. Realizing that he was not going to convince him. Dando cuenta que no iba a convencerle. He gave him his portion of the inheritance. Le dio su herencia. And the young man went off to a far nation. El joven se fue a otra nación. And he began to live recklessly. Comenzando de vivir en desorden. He had lots of money. Con mucho dinero. And so he had lots of friends. Entonces tuvo, tuvo muchos amigos. But one day his money ran out. Pero algún día se acabó el dinero. And when his money ran out, his friends ran Cuando out se also. Acabó el dinero, tus amigos terminó también. He had to finally get a job. Por fin tenía que conseguir un trabajo. Taking care of swine. Cuidando los cerdos. Scriptures relate to us that his condition got so deplorable. La escritura nos dice que se, su condición se convirtió en bien malo. So much as to where he desired to eat the food that was fed to the pigs. Hasta el punto que deseo de comer la misma comida como los cerdos. The young man who had had everything he needed at home. El joven que tuvo todo lo que necesitó en su hogar. And really didn't appreciate and understand the value of it. Pero no apreció el valor de todo. Finally he realized I'm going to perish here. Por fin dio cuenta que me voy a morir aquí. He said I need to get up and get out of here. Le dijo yo tengo que salirme de aquí. He said, I will arise and go into my father. You're gonna, I'm going to tell him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Just make me as one of your servants. Because he realizes he was taking care of the pigs. 
porque Dios cuenta que estuvo cuidando los cerdos the servants in my father's house have abundance of bread and I'm perishing los here los siervos en la casa de mi padre tienen pan para comer y yo estoy muriendo aquí he had lost his identity perdió su identidad when he lost his relationship with his father he lost his identity cuando perdió su relación con su padre perdió su identidad he had money but it wasn't satisfying to him He had friends, but they could not satisfy him. Finally, he rose and went back to his father. His father was waiting for him. He fell upon his neck and hugged him. He said, "This is my son who was lost. He's found. He was dead, but now he's alive." Because although he lost his identity, his father always remembered who he was. your joy and your identity. But I'm thankful to be able to, to proclaim today that our Heavenly Father is here. Jesus Christ is in this place. And He is here to give you and affirm your identity. Separate from the Lord, we never will have anything. We all need to realize that everything we have in life Todos tenemos que dar cuenta que todo lo que tenemos en la vida Sooner or later we're going to lose it Pronto o después vamos a perderlo We don't like to think about losing things No queremos pensar en perder las cosas But it's part of life Pero es parte de la vida You can buy a new car Puedes comprar un nuevo carro It's not going to last forever No va a durar para siempre You can buy new clothes. Puedes comprar nueva ropa. You're going to have to buy some other ones. Vas a necesitar comprar más. I have to realize today Tienes que dar cuenta hoy día that one day I'm going to lose everything I have. Que algún día voy a perder todo lo que yo tengo. I don't like to think about it. No me gusta pensar en eso. One day I'm going to lose my wife. Algún día voy a perder mi esposa. One day I'm going to lose my daughters and my son-in-law. I'm thankful for them and I love and treasure them. But my identity is not in them or in anything else I have. That's why there is such confusion in our world. It's popular to hear people say nowadays. Es popular oír las personas diciendo hoy día. I need to find myself. Necesito encontrar mí mismo. Sometimes people will quit their jobs. A veces personas renuncian sus trabajos. Move away from their homes. Para mudar de su hogar. Go to another place. Ir a otro lugar. Just to find themselves. Para encontrar mí mismo supuestamente. But unfortunately, when we find ourselves. Pero lamentablemente cuando encontramos nuestros mismos. We don't find what we need. No encontramos lo que necesitamos. We don't find something to satisfy us. Only in Jesus Christ. Only in the presence of God. Do we find something that we will never lose? Only in His presence is there fullness of joy. Only in His presence is there peace that passes all understanding. But I want to encourage each and every one of us today. There is an identity Hay una in Jesus Christ. There is a blessing Hay today for each and every one of us. If we will allow the Lord si to work in our lives Señor today, He will do a work. Maybe we will not even be aware of. We will begin to feel something. We will begin to feel His presence. Although we won't understand all that is going on. But oh, what a difference Jesus Christ can make. He can change your sorrow into joy. He can change your mourning into dancing. He can take away your hopelessness and give you hope. He'll give you a purpose to live. He'll give you an identity like your mother. And most of all, the Apostle Paul said, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Hallelujah! It is 
the strategy of the enemy of our souls to keep us from having that identity and to steal it away from us. He wants to cause us as the children of God to lose our identity. You see, it's not enough just to receive an identity. You have to guard your identity. Recently, my wife and I were preaching in Canada. To go across the border into Canada, we had to show our passports. While I was in Canada, I just didn't throw my passport somewhere in the back of the car. I put it where I knew where I could find it. Because I knew when I wanted to come back in the good old U.S. of A. I was going to have to show that passport. I took care of that passport. They're expensive now. Son carros ahora. But more than being expensive. Pero más de ser carro, it was my right to come back home. It proved my identity. Oh, oh, we have an identity of Jesus Christ. It and it's not enough to have no it. it. We can't be careless with it. No. We have to guard it. No. We have to treasure our relationship no. with the Lord. No. You see, Adam lost his no. identity no. in paradise. In the garden of Eden, Adam didn't treasure his identity. And he lost his identity because of sin. I believe that's why the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Creo que eso es la razón por la cual el apóstol Pablo escribió en 1 Corintios capítulo 16. Challenging the Corinthian church. Retando la iglesia de los Corintios. Say, know ye not that ye are the temple of God. 3.16. No sabes que sois templo de Dios. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Y que el Espíritu de Dios mora en vosotros. I said, hey, remember. Pablo dijo, oye, recuérdate. You've got an identity. Tienes una identidad. Something happened to you. Algo pasó a ti. You've received something of great value. Has recibido algo de grande valor. The apostle Peter concurred with him in 1 Peter 2. Estuvo en acuerdo con él. En 1 Pedro 2. Verse 9, he says, but you are a chosen generation. Dos nueve. Mas vosotros sois linaje escogido. A royal priesthood. Real sacerdocio. And holy nation. Nación santa. A peculiar people. Pueblo adquirido por Dios. That you should show forth the praises of him. Para que anuncies las virtudes de aquel. Who has called you out of darkness. Que os llamó de las tinieblas. Into his marvelous light. A su luz admirable. You've received something. Has recibido algo. You have something that identifies you. Tienes algo que te identifica. Everyone wants to be identified with something. Cada uno tiene que estar identificado con algo. People do sometimes different things. Las personas hacen tal vez diferentes cosas. To identify themselves. Para identificar a sí mismo. Some try to identify with a group of people. Some try to dress a certain way. Talk a certain way. Have a certain look. Comb their hair a certain way. To have an identity. So that when people see them, they will say, oh yes, they're... Para que cuando personas les vean, dice, oh, y en sí están así. But that is all temporal. Pero todo eso es temporal. But today we have an opportunity. Hoy día tenemos la oportunidad. 
to be identified with our Savior Jesus Christ. But it's not enough just to be with the people of God. We have to be identified with Him. I don't want to be like those who return back to Jerusalem and found out all too late that they had lost their identity. John said, Behold, what manner of love hath the Father bestowed upon us? That we should be called the sons of God. Today there is an incomparable identity that you and I have. And we must take full advantage of it. I don't want to leave this service without being in touch with God. And I don't want to leave this service without God touching me. I invite you all to stand today. There is a short story I want to share with you. It says her disguises did not work. The Queen of France from May 10, 1774 until January 21st of 1793. She was young and energetic. Immature. No madura. And she longed to be with people of her own age. Resisting the limitations of royal life, Resistiendo las, la vida re, real, she would disguise herself ella se disfrazó and, sí misma, and attend parties and balls. Para asistir las fiestas y danzas. The biographer Carol Eric, Carole Erickson, El escritor Carrie Erickson said about Marie Antoinette, dejó, dijo hasta que de Marie Antoinette her rapid and decisive paces Su taza muy rápida, were her marks of distinction. Fueran sus marcas distinguidas. It was said that she could never, never successfully disguise herself. Fue dicho que ella nunca puede misma Even at masked balls. Aún en las danzas, because no matter how she dressed, no importa como ella se vistió, she always walked like an empress. Siempre caminó como yeah. era real. Una emperatriz. Una emperatriz. She would try to hide her identity. Trató de esconder su identidad. But she had been trained. Pero ella fue entrenada. And brought up to walk a certain way. Para caminar de cierta manera. And no matter if people couldn't see her face or not. Y no importa si pudieron ver su cara o no. The way she walked gave her identity away. Yeah. You see, an identity is more than skin deep. A true identity is who we are on the inside. We are in a world that might obscure certain things about us. But I want my way of walk to identify me as a son of Almighty God. I challenge you today to allow the Spirit of God to move in your heart and life. It doesn't make any difference if you've known the Lord for several years. Or if you are just beginning your relationship with Him. There is a special identity. A special calling of God. A special anointing. A special experience that you can receive today. By being filled with the glorious Spirit of Almighty God. I encourage you to let this raise our hands to the Lord today and thank you for his presence and if there is a desire in your life to affirm your identity in Jesus Christ I invite you to come to the front 
to open up your heart and allow the Lord to work and to produce an identity in you. We have an incomparable identity. Let's be diligent and never lose it in Jesus' name. Yes, that's it. In the name of 